Hey, Scott Grove here from Imagine Grove, and I'm a woodworker, and I do online demonstrations and classes. Uh, this last weekend, I gave a, a class on veneering and radial matching. I also do turning and inlay. And with that said, I have been getting a lot of requests on what's my setup look like and the equipment and cameras and everything else. So I thought I'd make a quick video here on sort of behind the scenes and what my setup's like. Got a couple of unique things that I thought might be helpful for anybody else who's sort of doing uh, these IRDs, interactive uh, remote demonstrations or, or, or video or, or vlogging or whatever you want to call it. So uh, let's get to it. Um, <clears throat> so uh, I, uh, I'm going to start with green screen. I think that's sort of a fun thing and I've been through sort of a whole cycle of that. So let me show you uh, what I've come up with. Uh, I'm going to switch this around, turn me around here like that okay so uh, with zoom if you're using zoom they have virtual backgrounds but they don't work really well and you can't do sort of picture in picture if you're uh, doing a PowerPoint or, or another camera or what have you which I'm doing I've got five or six cameras here I even lost count but for green screen uh, to have a nice crisp thing I started out with one of these collapsible uh, sort of things they work uh, real well uh, the problem is, is I needed to sort of hold it and mount it above. That was kind of pain in the ass. And I'll talk about my um, auto pole system just in a bit here. This is a good start, but trying to mount it was, was kind of difficult. And as you saw, now i got to fold this thing up. Taking it up and down, since I'm a full-time woodworker, I need to sort of be mobile and, and be able to break my studio down quickly so I can get back to work, make some money. Okay, you create a taco shell, right? And my right hand is the, was the top. Twist this around. And I think this is supposed to, that's the key. And that, that's the problem. You gotta tuck that baby in and around. Oh my God. <laughs> that looked easy, didn't it? Just Google it. I can't believe they don't give you instructions for that. I then got one of these um, pull-up things. So this is sort of a, a floor-mounted kind of pop-up screen. And this works really well. So uh, you can close it up, store it away real quick. You just grab this handle and this green screen pops up. And this worked really well for a long time. The problem for me is it really wasn't big enough because I'm working on a bench, I'm not doing sort of just a close up, I'm kind of moving around and it really just wasn't wide enough. That was really the issue. I thought about getting two, which would be would make sense. I think the seam, since it has a doesn't have a black border here, the seam, I, from what I understand, it would work. Uh, but I found a better solution. So put this away. So what I did is I came up with this screen from the ceiling so this screen I actually got for free I'm a dumpster diver many many years ago and I and I found it in a dumpster and I knew eh, you know this is back when people had projectors and what have you um, but from what I found out that a lot of schools and institutions don't use this sort of pull down screen anymore so my hunch is if you went to sort of a used furniture store one of these big institutional places that buy you know, buy out closed factories and whatnot. I would imagine you can get these for pretty cheap. I haven't confirmed that, but that's just my hunch, which is pretty good. Uh, it was white and uh, it pulled down. Uh, and what I did is I looked into the green screen paint, which is like 150 bucks a gallon. So I'm a little frugal. I just went to uh, Lowe's, my local big box store. I bought a Sherwin-Williams paint. I looked at all the colors. I sort of, I think I had a, 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 a scrap paint, but I just went in and picked a color that I thought was close enough. And <clears throat> I will post the mixture in the description below. 
But uh, one thing that they recommended is getting an exterior latex that's more flexible because that was my concern if this is going to roll up and roll down. And I had bought a whole gallon for, I don't know, 30, 40 bucks uh, and I probably used a quart. So I got plenty of this to have some fun with. This is Weather Shield dirt stain blocker paint. Um, but again, the formula they printed on the can and I'll, I'll post that in the notes below. But this is, uh, works well, real affordable. And as you see, I got it mounted. I got plenty of room to either side and height. So now the whole green screen thing works really well, as you can see here. Okay. So, it all pulls up, that's really the way to go, I'm really happy with that. Uh, beforehand, and when I had this screen and other cameras, which I'll show you in a bit, I used this, what's called an auto-pole system. So, auto-pole system, auto-pole is a photography system. And uh, the reason I like this, as opposed to tripods, it allows me, it's one more uh, sturdy, I can go real high. I got 12 foot ceilings here, and by flipping this lever, this, this pole just drops down, and I can move it around real quick. I got a set of four of these, just push it up, pull this lever, and it's real sturdy. And it has all sorts of accessories. For example, there's this uh, kind of clamp here, and you can get, you know, accessory poles that will interlock to one another and you can put a sort of a backdrop. That's how I mounted that other system. In addition, I use it for uh, different camera angles. Oh, hello. Don't drop the poles. So they have uh, all, sorts of, all sorts of accessories. They have these auto pole clamps and these sort of uh, gimbal things that allow you to flex it around. Point being is that I could, or I used to, clamp this on up here and I could uh, come overhead for lighting, uh, above lighting or uh, other camera mounts. Very flexible and I could break this uh, down uh, pretty quick, you know, 10 minutes I get the whole thing set up and, and down. Although now I'm teaching quite a bit so I rearranged my studio to be just permanently set up, which I'll show you here. But the auto pole, if you're setting up and breaking down, you might want to consider that. As opposed to tripods, again, because tripods have feet on them, and sometimes you're tripping all over those if, you, if you're trying to work. I've got a narrow space here, so uh, that works really well. The auto pole I use for uh, most of my cameras. Let's, let's show you what this is about. So here is my set up. Uh, let's talk maybe briefly about lighting. Now we'll stay on the auto poles. Let's talk about the auto poles. So I don't know if you can tell uh, real easily here. I've got one auto pole that comes down here and I've got a whole all oh, sorts of craziness. First, wire management is certainly going to be uh, an issue. It, you know, these all these low voltage things. So I've got one plug there another one here and another one down there. So it gets real crazy, they're all plugged into one another. A side note is that even this, this is kind of nuts. So I've got, uh, you know, this plugged in because getting all your plugs to line up, they don't always fit, right? So one little thing is get these little six inch plug extensions. This works really, really well. And from there you can then plug in, you know, these various, uh, let's go down here. You can plug in other other extensions or if you've got transformers. And I don't know why they don't align these all up the same way, but you know, some of the plugs are different. So get a, a half a dozen of these. These are really great. And then you can, you know, go from there and you're not going to bind up. So I've got all these gang together. So I just have one switch down here that turns it on and off. Some people might think it's nuts having all these uh 
you know, I might be overloading the system. Well, it's all low voltage. You know, this is, it doesn't take a lot of amperage, so you're not going to blow the circuit. And good ones, good power strips will have a circuit breaker sort of built in. So uh, look into that. Uh, in addition, so I have a couple cameras mounted to this. So one camera that I have up here is an old uh, video camera and it's on a remote control sort of gimbal. I'll show you what that's about uh, just in a bit from another angle. Then I have, again, this sort of uh, camera mounting system here, and I got my HD uh, Logitech uh, Brio there. That's a 4K camera, and I'll show you what the cameras are. So point being is all of this is mounted on one pole, and point being is if I need to move it out of the way, I simply release the lever, and obviously I gotta unplug everything, and I can move this whole thing out of the way real quick, and it's uh, pretty easy. So that's about the auto pulse. Other camera mounting things that I have, I have a close-up one here. So this is a um, sort of just a, a little bench top stand. I put a couple of weights on it down here, some old uh, weights, so it's uh, real stable, so it doesn't bounce around. And let me move to this. Well, I know there's a, visually there's a lot going on here, but this is a um, these magic arms. So if you're not familiar with these, these are really great. You can uh, simply twist this and lock a camera in, and you can move it around any direction you want. They come long, and this is, I think, a six-inch version and short. Uh, so this particular camera here is my, um, which one is that? That is my 920. So it's a Logitech 920. And that's an HD camera. That's I use for sort of low angles. Uh, I also sometimes mount other cameras on. So that's one camera, any other mounting, but we're talking about mounting systems. Another camera that I have mounted is my Mevo. So a Mevo is a really great camera because one, it can be controlled remotely uh, through NDI. And, uh, but let's just talk about the mounting. So the mounting is, this is on a tripod. I don't know if you can see that here. So this I have on a, on a, on a tripod. I also have another one of these magic arms so I can make quick adjustments. This is for sort of the uh, three quarter shot where I can get the entire uh, bench but I can control this remotely as far as the zoom. So with a quick touch pad, I can sort of zoom in real quick. The reason I have this out here is because if I want to work on the bandsaw or the bench that this camera's on right now or my table saw, I can quickly sort of swing this around during a demonstration and say, you know, well, watch me here. In addition, you might want to look into these quick connects. So this cord here, I don't need. Uh, that's just for uh, charging. This has a six hour battery life, so a big battery life and I can use a quick, and I can take this off and actually literally walk around the, uh, the room. And if I want to work, I also do turning. So if I want to go to my lathe, I can sort of bring this camera right over there and remotely uh, still get the, get the shot. So this is really great if you're doing a lot of moving around and what have you. Uh, love this. It also has an SD card. So if you want to record with this, you can, and you can take this into the field or outside and it's really great. But these little connectors, Buy a bunch of them for all your cameras. Just get the same one, and then they're interchangeable. So if I want to switch these cameras, I can I can quickly pop them on and off. So let me sort of show you a little close up of what that is. So there's a lever here, and that um, that is a quick release. That works really great. So that uh, is on a tripod. Uh, so uh, it's a stationary tripod, but has a long sort of swing arm. Hold on, there you go. So I can sort of swing this around, swing it around to the bands off if I want to get a closer shot. And then lastly, I do have a tripod here uh, with, again, a, for my camera. Again, there's the quick release and a magic arm for my phone. I do a lot of sort of a momentary quick live stuff. And having this phone mount that is spring-loaded, I can put my phone on when it's not on this sort of gimbal tripod that I'm working and I can move this around. And one other thing that I like is I got a, uh, a tripod wheelie thing. I don't know what you call this. And that makes it real easy. So you're not sort of trying to lift and pull us around. I can simply roll this around and um, you know position it. If you're doing a lot of this online stuff, 
camera setup is it can eat up a lot of time so i try to make that as quick as possible i also have a couple tripods and mounts all over the shop where i i know i'm constantly doing stuff this particular tripod here also has this feature which i really like where i can sort of drop this arm down if i want to get a closer shot or i can go straight up so i kind of like that overhanging i can bring this over the over say the table saw and get a shot straight down without spending a lot of time monkeying around getting the uh the, the, the setup so we're talking about uh mounting and camera tripods let's come over to the to my turning area so i got a couple lays again here's another auto pole right and there i have the overhead bar so i can get uh, overhead shots on my smaller this is my mobile lathe and then I have another auto pole here with uh, sort of this gizmo I bought this kind of thing this is just a cheap old plastic arm uh, but once you get in position or close I use the again here's a short magic arm that I can I can move around and again here's my phone I usually do a lot of that kind of stuff on on the phone so lighting, let's talk about lighting. Obviously for lathe people, you might know this little gooseneck. One little uh, tip is I took a PVC pipe, well, it's taped on there, because these can be a little hot and um, to focus. So when you're trying to film, it will burn out or blow out, you know, your, whatever, you're, whatever you're focusing on. So what I did is took a little inch and a half PVC pipe, took a piece of acrylic, glued that on there and I sanded it so it frosted it that softens that light and it just makes it um, distribute a little easier so it's not not as hot and you get a better shot on that I also have sort of this LED this LED light here that's just kind of hung on there for overall lighting and lastly I have an overhead light box and we'll get to the light lighting box there and that uh, sort of softens everything up uh, for this particular area. So that's my setup in, in there. Let's talk about lighting. So having, so having good lighting is really important. Uh, color balanced is, is nice too. Just sort of a, 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 a mid range light. Uh, Ooh, it's not uh 32 K is too warm. I think it's 5,000 or 42 K I think is where you want. Um, so I bought these light boxes off of a site called Wish. There's another one called Bangwood. You might see this on these social media sites. They're, you know, inexpensive, knockoff sort of things, probably obviously from China or overseas. This particular one only has one light that comes in it, but they work just fine. And they come with a tripod, and they're, as you can see, they go pretty high, and they work just fine. I've got a higher-end one that I bought from B&H, down in New York City, it's a photography professional photography supply. I, similar, but the one from B&H has three lights, and you can turn each one on individually. So you can control the light. I use that in my photography studio in my house. But for for this, is it's really good. As you might see, I also have. Uh, I made sort of my own. This is my old old school light box that I made years ago. I just put a whole bunch of lights in there. Of course, some of them are are off or bad I, i'm not sure i i have two switches so i can turn sort of half of them on or all of them on so that helps also but one thing that i've kind of recently noticed is i have sort of a a, a side light here so you can see this little this is an led light and i'll again put all the model numbers uh but this one woo, there we go one thing i like about like about this is that you control can, can control the color temperature let's see if that changes see i don't know if you can see oh that's a brightness so this on the back is controlling digital readout and it can controls the output so i can go down all the way down to two percent all the way up to 100 percent. and if i press this now here i got a 33 ek so this is a little warmer i'll explain that in a second but by pressing that button i can then change the color temperature so I really like that option on this particular one. And the reason is I have it on 32K is it is as of that warm glow. I think it's called rim glow when you shine from behind or off to the side. So when I'm sort of broadcasting, it's I'm not all washed out with these sort of soft boxes. So that's sort of what that light is. I used to have a light overhead. I 
watch some video and they're saying add a add what's called rim glow when you have a light shining from the back of your head that helps define you from the green screen and gives you a little rim glow uh, you see that in all the movies with the beautiful women but um i eliminated that just because it's another light bar and i want to be able to break up and i sort of eliminated that but keep that in mind so that is my lighting okay so now let's talk about my um, different cameras. So we talked about uh, my one camera up there. That is there. That's an old Panasonic uh, HD. I'll mark all the all the things then. And the reason I like that is because that gets me super super close up shots. Zoom over here. So here's my screen. I'll talk about this in a second. But if I go to camera four, you can see. This is that camera there, and I can get really, really close shots because I do a lot of inlay. So having a camera that, that does that, I really important. Uh, unfortunately, this particular camera uh, will remotely um, zoom in and out through the use of my phone. The problem is when you're in that feature, it won't broadcast through the cables uh, to the computer. So if any IT guys out there know how to fix that, I would love that, be able to zoom in and out. So I have to sort of preset my focus and and frame, and that's it. So I would love to have an automatic zoom in and out. But what I do have is that gimbal. So there is a remote control down here. Right here. And that will uh, move that camera side to side. So I do have some control over over uh, the camera, although I usually just draw an X on the table and that's the kite, because I really zoom in super, super tight for my fine inlays. So that's the one camera I have. The second camera is that uh, Logitech uh, Brio. That's a 4K camera, so I can zoom in without losing resolution. So um, also other side note is that I've labeled all the cameras. So that's camera four. Uh, the Brio is camera seven, although there's multiple frames. I'll show you that in a bit. So I've connected that to my program or sync that up to my program. So I know uh, the program in a bit, but you can see here, there's um, camera four, right? So if I press camera four uh, or camera seven, if I go to camera seven, you know, that, that goes there. Now the, the 4K camera, there's a wide shot, same camera, frame eight, can zoom in and I don't lose resolution. So that's sort of what that, uh, that kind of thing is about. Uh, in addition, I've got my head on camera here and that's what, uh, that's that shot there. Oh, and let's go for the green screen. So if I pull my green screen down, as you can see, that allows me to, there's the, 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 cutout version and I have a fake background and if I am doing my close-up shot and I want to select the um, what's called picture in picture oh, picture in picture green screen which would be um, this one here you can see I can put my head in there and I can sort of maximize it I can talk to the camera or or use this to, like a weatherman and point to various areas shrink that down and also drop that off and we'll get to the um, uh, to this program in a second here. And then I have this, which is a virtual background. So this background here is just a picture. And it, cause my shop, as you see, saw is a little messy and can, um, be distracting. So we're talking about cameras. So this camera here is a Logitech 930. Now the 930 has a 90 degree, um, angle. The 920 has a 78 degrees, so a little tighter. That's sort of what that camera was there. Okay. Then I have an overhead camera. So this is a PT Optics. Let's zoom up. There we go here. So this is for the overhead view, right? So if I'm working and again, I have a number on that and that's then I press number five on my camera and that gives me my overhead view. What I've done on this is I've taken one of these sort of, uh, uh, I don't know, this is a social media thing for your phone and it allows me to sort of move this in and out. I've got it set where I want it, but I can back it off if I want a lower angle and I have just a little swivel head on here 
so I can make minor adjustments. Plus you have a swivel there and you can always square this up. If the image is not <clears throat> square on your screen, you can uh, uh, just square that up remotely. Uh, for what it's worth, I have, um, we're talking cameras, so I think that's all my cameras. So let's review the cameras. I've got uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six cameras. It might, it might be a little excessive, and quite frankly, sometimes if you don't really have this arranged by numbers, you can have too many cameras, and, and it gets a little confusing to, to, to know what you're, what you're shooting at. Um, but I also don't want just to be a talking head, right? I, I want, if I'm doing a lot of uh, instruction, I will sort of can bounce around, and for what it's worth, my wife, Nancy, who co-hosts uh, the, the, uh, the demonstrations, she's in the office watching this, and she can control the cameras from inside. So if I got my visor on or if I'm focused on and my head's in the way of one camera and I'm, not, not looking at, and I'm not looking at the screen, she can look at the screen and say, oh, your head's in the way and just change the camera as opposed to kind of yelling at me through the, <laughs> through the speaker or my headphone or what have you. Um, oh, and lastly, on the Brio camera, so... That's, uh, this is the Brio camera. Boy, it's real busy here. There's the Brio. And I can control that Brio from my iPad. So this, this is the Brio here, and that's the camera angle. And what I can do on this is I have preset, um, preset, you know, things. And I can move this around, and I can change this just by a touch of a screen. I usually just have one or two, sort of the wide angle. And then I can also, if I click on this, I can do a slow, a slow pan. I don't know if you see that's slow pan, and that is camera six. So you'll get to see camera six. See how that's slowly zooming in, which is kind of a sexy uh, thing. Just visually keeps things uh, mixing up. There's all my cameras. My um, TV is mounted on a tripod here, or my monitor on wheels. Again, that makes it easy for me to sort of roll it out of the way. I've uh, mounted um, this bracket here, which actually allows me to take it off and hang it on one of those cross poles over my lathe if I wanted to. And I put a timer here, which is kind of good. And this is bolted on this, this uh, wood, drilled a hole in it for this sort of arm there. So hope that makes sense on that one and for what it's worth i'm going to be mounting a uh, separate uh a separate monitor because now we're doing on hands-on online classes or workshops and um this monitor is just sort of my broadcasting monitor for vmix but i want to be able to see the students work so i have an extra wide monitor that i'm going to be mounting up here just order the bracket for that so I'll be able to watch uh, my, the Zoom individual screens and they're gonna be pointing their cameras at their work and I can watch their work. So that's sort of a new thing that people are doing. Uh, so look for that. And then lastly, if you wanna know what this gimbal's all about, which is kinda of cool, it makes it all sort of smooth. Let's see. And lastly, I'm shooting with an Android 7? 10. I'll check that out, check down on the notes. Uh, uh, so, uh, smartphones these days have great uh, cameras, iPhones, Androids, I don't know about any other phones, but they all work and a lot of people just shoot on them. And I'm using this sort of gimbal thing, which is kind of cool, so that keeps uh, all the images uh, sort of straight. This little baby here, this is what I found to be the, the, the lightest weight, most compact travel uh, tripod for my phone. Uh, Spring-loaded, you can mount it in the back or the bottom. Um, it has a fully adjustable head. Point is, is it folds down really compact. But what I like about this, these arms fold out, tripod, and it comes with a little Velcro. So you can quickly wrap this around a tree branch or a pole or, or, or something and just affix it to something or a fence. And when I travel, I, 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 I put this and I travel with this. It's all about weight and volume, right? When you, if you do a lot of traveling uh, like I do, you know about that and uh, I want to be as lightweight as possible 
and I can sort of roll this whole thing up and keep this in my sort of uh, a day pack and uh, I don't go anywhere without this. So uh, that's the last thing and I will uh, post links to this um, also. So there you go. Lastly, how do I mount everything? I have uh, my laptop on sort of one of these uh, pivot things. You're going to have a lot of USB connections, so you want to have these hubs. I found that you have to have a hub that's powered. So each one of these uh, is has a separate power jack to it, so you can um, not lose. I've had problems. I don't know what the terminology is here. So I can plug in my various cameras. And it's really important if you're disconnecting everything that you make sure that you label the camera into the same port every time so it doesn't confuse your system. It's always looking for these different ports. So keep everything uh, marked the same. And, um, you know, that's what all this is about. And you have different ports here. And if you look inside the USB port, um, some are USB 2 and 3, if I have that correct. And it's just the faster speed. I think the threes are blue and the twos are black, but there's another way to do that. And I don't know much about all this. I'm, uh, <clears throat> I get a lot of help. So that's, uh, this is on a sort of a, a swivel, so I can move that out of the way if it's all broken down. I have a little uh, iPad sort of holder here, which is great, moves around. And um, then I have uh, this sort of thing where I, I can screw my phone in and monitor uh, a Zoom call on that or, or calls and what have you. But lots of cables. For my sound, <clears throat> I have a Rode uh, wireless. This just clips on, although I'm thinking about getting a headset because you can plug in a mic in there and do the whole Madonna thing. So there's a receiver here, and this is what gets cl uh, clipped on. Remember, I've got all these plugged in because you want to keep these things fully charged. You know, there's nothing worse than having your system battery go dead for a headset. I have a, uh, these are Android earbuds, having some sort of methods uh, to hear, just makes it a lot easier as opposed to listening to uh, the speaker through the microphone. And I now will talk briefly about, or lastly about this program. This is called vMix. And as you can see, there's all sorts of inputs here um, these are the various cameras on the top and I have them lined up with the numbered cameras. So number one is, is camera number one there. And then number two is actually the green screen, so on and so forth. And these, uh, I have lined up all the way up to nine. Well, I got oh, plenty more, but up to nine is, uh, corresponds with my computer. So on my computer, if I hit nine, that turns on the PowerPoint. So that's the PowerPoint which is down here. So I can quickly uh, change cameras back and forth. And of course, I'm doing all this not on the keyboard, but I'm doing it on a remote keyboard. So I have these remote keyboards here. It has a little trackpad. This is the old version, and I just got this new one. This is an RII. And the reason uh, I was recommended this is because there's no delay. These keyboards can go to sleep so if you want to change camera, you got to sort of press the button twice. You got to press it once to wake the keyboard up and then press it again where the RII turns on automatically if you're talking for a long time and it goes to sleep. And I primarily use the top row of keys. Although this um, system, you can set up hotkeys. And again, I can zoom in and out by pressing various keys. Let's go over here. This might be a little easier to kind of demonstrate. So if I'm doing camera, say, three, and I want my picture-in-picture, picture, I go over here and I got the queue set up for the picture-in-picture. Picture. You see how my picture-in-picture picture brought my head in? And if I hit M, that will maximize my head and turn that off and on. You can also use other keys. For example, if I want to digitally zoom in, so on camera one, I'm sorry, on camera, I'm on camera three. If I want to zoom in, I can hit the D key, which is what I'm doing here, and digitally zoom in and digitally zoom out. I can also pivot left and right by using my left and right uh, key arrows. And if I get all confused, I can hit simply zero. 
and it should reset. And that key's not working. So I got to really get those hotkeys. But those are uh, really useful with hotkeys. So uh, take, you know, take a look at this. It's called vMix. Uh, you can put many, many windows in here. Now, this is, I have the vMix Pro version. The free version only allows four inputs. I have the Pro version, which allows a whole bunch of other inputs. And I can, um, you know, switch manually. I could set these up as hotkeys, but uh, I, you know, I've used the hotkeys for other things. But uh, you can have pictures and videos and all sorts of other stuff in there. I think I got a video in here. Um, no, I don't. Here is the video. So I can run videos. And if I want to bring my head in and, and talk over this and talk about what I'm doing. So this is a very powerful program. You can do all sorts of, of inputs besides PowerPoint and videos, pictures, slideshows. You name it, you can do it. So um, great program. Check it out. So if I have a pre-recorded video, it's always nice to have a little short something because you never know. You forget a tool or, or who knows what. You hit that video, they can watch that. I think that uh, gets everything. I don't think I forgot anything else. That's my setup. I hope that's really helpful. This, in time of COVID, this is the only really way for me to teach. I usually teach across the country and in Scotland, and now I'm kind of teaching all over the world, which is kind of cool. So look into vMix, check out cameras, please respond. If you got any other suggestions, as I said, I'm a member of a, a user group that's been very, very helpful. And, um, so the point is, if I can learn it, you can learn it because, uh, you know, it was, it was a struggle at first, but, you know, hang in there and you can sort of uh, uh, keep your uh, instructions and, and classes going. So thank you. I will post all the links to all this equipment down below. I'll actually put a kit. That's that last thing. It's a platform called Kit where I can organize resources and put them together and put affiliate links so if you want to support me you click on it it takes you to amazon and i get three cents or whatever it is it's a you know small income but that helps me uh so check that out or, or or go to your favorite photo store or online or what have you but i'll put all that in a kit on the equipment that i use and that'll be helpful for you to see everything uh, that i'm using and it keeps track of, of the stuff i haven't done that yet but i'll do it just for this video okay thanks for watching i hope this helps uh, let me know what you guys are doing and um Stay safe. 